What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Wings of Redemption, and we're back with Painkiller Already, episode 41. And now we have our first special guest of the night. It's your boy, Joe Lozon. What's, What's going up, on, buddy? Ooh. How's it going? What's Good, up, man? Right that time? You got it right. Much better. <laughs> yeah, I was horrible, I'm not, and I'm the one. Anyway, so, Joe, I know you do interviews all the time. You probably get this uh, every day. Hypothetical situation. You're right. married. Yep. You swap That's bodies with your wife. With your wife. Did you do it just to check it out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, probably, yeah. All right. <laughs> my, my girlfriend's freaking short as hell. She's like, weighs like 90 pounds. She's like five feet tall. It'd be a, 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 I'd see the world from a different height. That's for you sure. Never, You'd see a lot of things from a different height. Know, right? <laughs> yeah, there'd be a whole new thing going on there. Oh, that, that would not be going on. That oh, would what? Be going on. No, 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 no. When I said, would you do it just to see what it's like? That was not I mean, a would you swap question. That was a <laughs> would you have sex question. Oh, no. Definitely. No? No. You're in the female body, though. And it doesn't it's, matter. It's, and it's not gay it's anymore because you're but a girl. But it's your body. Is Joe Lowe's on like the, it, like the anal it, sex? Is that right reason? No. Enough? No. Wings, wings, man. This is, a, this is an honored guest. <laughs> this is not a YouTube celeb. <laughs> But yeah, that was Ricky Chops' answer. Like it, with no hesitation, the guy goes, "Nah, she takes it up the butt. I can't do that." <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, no way. I no, yes, yeah, so. bodies. The sex is not something that would be happening. <laughs> but it's your body that you would be it having. Doesn't matter. With. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, Joe, don't go kidding us. We know you've had sex with yourself before, right? Cool. This is just taking it to the next level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, it's just like for the record, we're not CNN here. We do not do professional interviews for a living. <laughs> that means I don't have to watch language or any of that bullshit. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. Hey, you guys want me to dig into the questions, or um, or you, you want to go first? So here's what somebody out? asked this. They wanted to know if any other fighters are gamers. And and I almost had so Nate Quarry, right? He's a gamer too, isn't he? Um, I don't know about Nate. I, I know a lot of different guys play Call of Duty though. Um really? I don't, I don't know if they're I don't know if they're super into it, but I know that a lot of guys I mean it, it's a good thing for downtime. I mean like if we're in the gym all the time, you're constantly getting punched in the face, lifting, running, all that kind of stuff. You need something to just kinda of hang out. More uh, movies get boring. So you go to Xbox, you go to things like that. A lot of guys play games. Man, I'm pretty sure. I think Nate actually became a Left 4 Dead character. Really? That's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not completely positive it was Nate Quarry, but I think it was. And I know one of the UFC fighters is one of the zombies in Left 4 Dead. Like they did, that, they brought him in, and I saw the whole thing where they did the, like the motion capture. It was pretty cool. That that is awesome. You know, I was uh, uh I wasn't a zombie game, but they made the UFC game, and I got scanned for that and all that kind of stuff, which was pretty badass. What's that experience like? Um, it was pretty quick. They uh, they, they took photos um, to get like birthmarks and tattoos and all that kind. Of, I have not neither of which. So um, what were you wearing? Just regular fight shorts, and then they just basically took it. Yeah, they had you stand in one spot and look, like you know, turn so many degrees and took a whole bunch of pictures. And they did like um a, like a body scan that got like a three D rendering of you. It was, that, that was pretty cool. The thing didn't take long, but it, it was pretty cool. Did you put on one of those like skin suits with the white balls on it? That, no, like, you know they do, they do all that for all the motion capturing. Uh, for mm-hmm. what we did is just you know stand there just so they can build the three D model of us. <laughs> that's what it. Cool man, huh? So, but the, the so the UFC fighters they don't actually get paid for the UFC game. Like I think I heard Dana White talking about that. Yeah, no, no, we don't. I mean, it, honestly, it wouldn't be that much anyways. There's so <laughs> many guys in there, you know. Like I don't know how many games it sold, but there were. You know, it would be a, such a small percentage, anyways. We um, most of the fighters sign um, like almost like a merchandise agreement, and uh, you know, and, and you know, but the video game is excluded and all that stuff. But they can make you know jewels on T-shirts and action figures and whatever else they want. <laughs> but the the other cool thing is though, it gets you kind of well known. Like you know, like any exposure you get is the next Mountain Dew deal that you might land or, or whatever. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, and who doesn't want to be in a video game? You know, like, that was, like, the coolest thing. You know, up until that point, it was, like, I got the game in advance before it was even out. Um, you know, I got to play it. You know, it was, I mean, I'm in a video game. A couple of video games, two video games. So, it's it's pretty badass. That's I want to cool, be in a video game. <laughs> You're on your way. video game, too. <laughs> You're on your way, Rush. You're on your way. <laughs> yeah, Rush, are you? <laughs> I could see it happening. So, here's another question I got. So, it's a picture of this coming from a gamer. How do you deal with the school bully? Um, you, you gotta learn. You gotta do jujitsu. You gotta learn with wrestling. You know, it's like m- most guys that are bullies have no idea at all what they're doing. 
You know what I mean? Like, I have kids at my gym that, like, couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag, but they know a little bit of wrestling, and they'll get zero crap from anyone because they'll just dump the kid on his head. It's, they'll it's, win the takedown. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's way better than punching. You know, <laughs> if you get a kid that's trying to bully you and you, and you shove him or push him, they don't know that you double leg them into a locker versus, you know, but you throw one punch, you're getting in trouble. So hmm. I think wrestling's the way to go. I like that. Yeah, but it takes an actual like time investment, right? There is no afternoon you can spend that's going to help you beat a guy who has yeah. 40 pounds on you. You exactly. have to actually join the wrestling team, you know, join a, a fight club or whatever and and like do it for real. And it's going to yeah. be 3 or 4 months before you've got any, you know, talent you can employ on a bigger guy. Yeah. Or you right. can take the shortcut and use the math book. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I swear <laughs> to God, that's what I was about to say. I was like, you want a shortcut to beat up the guy that got 40 pounds on you? yourself a rubber hammer yeah right <laughs> and, then, oh. and he gets a rubber hammer and it's just escalation you know what i mean rubber hammer fights then you would then everybody's doing them after school yeah. like, I, <laughs> uh, so joe i wanted to talk about the I, when i watch the ufc it seems like if you were to rewind what seven years or so there were more uh you know, jiu-jitsu fights than now now it seems like guys are standing more often than they used to Yep. Do you think that's because it's an effective fighting style or because stand-up fighters get forgiven for losses? or like What are you thinking there? Um, I, I think that like a long time ago, like submissions are super easy to set up on someone that doesn't know what's coming. You know? mm-hmm. But nowadays, everyone's so you know, well-versed in the submission game, it's much tougher to hit an arm lock. You know? It's not like you know, the Hoist Gracie days when no one knew what an arm lock or a triangle choke was. Is you know this mysterious choke that no one understands. Now it's like everyone's putting in a ton of time, and it, it honestly it, nowadays it comes down to who's the better condition guy, who's a little bit faster, who hits a little bit harder, and the fight starts on the feet. So you know people, you know <laughs> you try to make a good first impression with that first punch you throw, and uh, you, know, you hope for the best. I got a question. Go ahead. All right. All right, and you're in a fighting situation. At what point do you do you uh, throw the first punch? I mean, like. Like, how do you decipher if you should go first or here, or you, do you always wait? In, a, like, a professional fight or outside? Or anywhere. Anywhere. You know, I, I don't like the idea of throwing the first punch. I think that, you know, outside, you know, a lot of things going to be avoided. You know, people seem to think that, oh, I had to do this or I had to do that. Or I'm not going to let them punk me. Those are the stupidest things people can say. I mean, it's like, like even if I'm, I can definitely fight, but I wouldn't get in a fight in a bar. You know, because I could beat the crap out of the guy, and then his girlfriend bottles me or stabs me with a, you know, <laughs> so much, or his buddy that kicks you in the head or that stomps you from behind, or like, there's so much bad stuff that can happen. So like outside, I pretty much would never throw the first punch. You know, I, I think that there's there's better ways to handle things. Um, during a fight, you know, I I um I think you should always try and be you know be the aggressive one. You should try and get off first. You know, you don't want, to, but you definitely want to throw the first punch. Huh. So you want the first punch, but you don't fight outside the ring. Do you think guys that that know how to fight, you know, the guys with some sort of training, are less likely to get into fights? Oh, definitely. You know, I, uh, you know, someone was sending me a message on Twitter the other day saying how like their buddy saw Uriah Faber and they thought that he was walking through the club tough, so he started mean mugging him and thought they were going to throw down. It's like Uriah would definitely not start a fight with you because you were looking at him across the club. You know what I mean? But the, the guy that's untrained that would probably get the crap kicked out of him was the guy that was going to start the fight. It's like. <laughs> guys that train and fight for a living or even just train for fun they get out all that aggression you know i get so many guys at my gym that you know they used to be you know punks they were punk kids and then they started doing jiu-jitsu and they get all, all that aggression they get out all that energy and they don't have to fight outside and they get to you know let it all out in a, a productive environment where there's mats and it's safe and it's one-on-one and you know what you're getting into not like i said out in a bar where you know you, or you hit someone even worse you hit someone, you knock them out. They they go down and hit the head on a on a you know on a table or something, and they you're in jail for manslaughter. It's just so many stupid things that can happen fighting outside. Hmm. So you're a purple belt, is that right? Um, yeah. I mean, so I, I mean, did, obviously you right. You, you've got the skill level higher than probably a lot of black belts. What made you stop, or like, what was you thinking there? Um, I I never trained in the gi at all until I went out to Hawaii with BJ. And um, I trained a little bit, and I really didn't even have a belt out there. You know, he he would have given me a belt, but I, I just didn't do the gi enough to get mm-hmm. a belt. And then when I came when I came home, I decided I wanted to put a little more time in on the gi. And um, I, I I got my. For, uh, let me interrupt you. For, for people that don't know, a gi is uh, like a thicker version of the karate pajamas that those guys wear. So. Yeah, there's a million different chokes and, and things you can do with the uniform. You know, against people. And uh, so I, I trained in Hawaii a little bit. I, when I came back, I started put a little more time in a gi. I got my blue belt, 
and then I blew up my ACL that night. <laughs> um, or I, I re-injured my ACL that night. And uh, so then I was sidelined for a while, and then I put a little more time into the gi, and I got my purple, and I, just, I haven't done it since. It, it, it's really, really tough to put in time in, 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 on gi, and then boxing and lifting and, and getting ready for fights all at the same time. It's just it, it's real, real tough to do both. I didn't know about your ACL. Did you have it fixed? Did you have surgery on it? Yep, I uh, I, uh, I did it one of my fights, and then uh, like I was limping like real, real bad. It was a Jeremy Stevens fight. I tried to shoot in the beginning of the fight, mm. and I just fell over, and uh, I ended up winning the fight. And uh, but I had a huge cut on my head, so I didn't train for a week. And then the first night I went back, you know, I got my my belt at the beginning of the class, and then we started to try and train and warm up, and I, my knee locked up, and yeah. So I did a uh, I had ACL replacement. I did the cadaver. Um, the cadaver. So, yeah. I did the patella. You did patella. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't want to do patella because I, I heard it's like it's super painful, like kneeling down on stuff. It's like kneeling down on like a tack or a marble or something. Um, it, so it hurt. Yeah, <laughs> it hurt a lot. Did did they have you doing rehab the same day as the surgery? Um, no, I had surgery on on like a Friday, and then but I think I, w- I went and started my rehab like Tuesday or Wednesday. And yeah, uh, man, I I had yeah. surgery well, whatever day it was, you know, I'll, I'll call it six a.m. Yeah, and by three p.m. they had my leg in this machine that was like stretching my brand new ACL. And yeah, I didn't I didn't do the machine either. Me. I didn't do the machine either. I um. I remember, like, the, the toughest thing was when I woke up the next day after surgery and uh, laying in bed and, like, the blanket being so heavy that, like, I couldn't, you know, turn my f- leg over. You know, I couldn't th- I couldn't do the rotation on my leg. Like, trying to lift my heel off the bed was, like, the toughest thing I've ever done in my life. I eventually got it, but it, it, was, it was so tough. I was amazed at, like, I went from fighting main event in the UFC to a month later, I'm, I'm laying in bed and unable to move my leg. It was, it was pretty tough. It was a rough patch. <laughs> It sucks, man. Yeah, my rehab lasted a long. It was like six months before I was. Really, I don't know, even longer than that, like eighteen months, and it was still bugging me. You know, not quite right. Yep, I fought a uh, ten months after surgery. So I had ACL surgery, and then that's I fought nice. later. Well, that's that's pretty that. fast. Yeah, that's pretty fast. <laughs> how long have you been involved with MMA? Like from the very beginning. Um, I think I started in like two thousand one. So like, it'd be like I think it'd be ten years. Like this coming summer. Was it just like a hobby to begin with, or just something to just something to do? Like yeah. you know, some people do yoga, but you did. And ten years? How old are you, by the way? Twenty six. Twenty six. All right. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you get? Um, I when I uh, when I was in high school, I started when I was like a, I think I was a, a, a sophomore in high school, and uh, you know, the, the WWF professional wrestling was huge. So uh, you know, we would we'd all watch the pay per view, we'd watch whatever Monday Night Raw, and we'd end up like you know trying to like power bomb each other, choke slam each other, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I had a trampoline, so we would end up on the trampoline trying to kill each other. And um, <laughs> after, like, we, we've been doing that for, like, we were doing it for a while, like, maybe, like, a year and a half. And then uh, my school did horrible. Like, in Massachusetts, we have an MCAS testing, which is, like, it's, like, standardized testing, but it's, like, essay format, which sucks. And um, <laughs> my school did terrible on it. But then, when we, th- then the teachers taught to the test. The next year, we did awesome on it. So as, like, a reward, um, we got a, a bunch of demonstrations and assemblies and things like that. And uh, my trainer, Joe Pomfret, came here and did, like, a, a, a karate and jiu-jitsu demonstration for us. And uh, the karate stuff was like, eh, whatever. But the jiu-jitsu stuff was awesome. It was like what we were trying to do on the trampoline, he was doing. So it was like there's a legitimate system that we can, you know, actually do this stuff. So a couple of my buddies went and signed up. And then next thing I knew, I was getting choked out all the time. So then I, you know, I'm super competitive. I had to, I, I can't let them have any kind of advantage on me. So I had to sign up, and it just you know it just started as a hobby, and then I, I kept doing it throughout all college, and uh, you know, and then eventually you know I was I was doing amateur fights, I was doing pro fights, I was fighting in like Montreal, I was fighting in Florida, I was fighting all over the place, and then uh, I got the call to fight in the UFC. You got the pretty awesome call to fight in the Ultimate Fighter, right? That was like the yeah. Oh, well, I did. I I, got, I fought Jens Pulver first. Like they were looking for for him to knock me out. And then he was going to be the coach on the show. So they said, oh, this will be perfect. We'll get this kid that's got a, a, a pretty good record. You know, Jens will knock him out. And then that will hype him going into the, the Ultimate Fighter show with BJ Penn. And uh, I knocked out Jens. And then they told me right off the bat, we want you for the show. It will be good TV, things like that. So so I, I went on the Ultimate Fighter afterwards. A little nice. back. Yeah, actually, I remember now that, that you remind me. That's cool, man. That's you. You mentioned uh, like the professional wrestling. Did you did you see uh, where Chris Jericho tweeted that thing the other night? I heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think about? For those That's who don't know, Chris Jericho tweeted that uh, that basically you know the UFC guys couldn't uh, do what him and uh, the rest of the pro wrestlers did. Basically, they couldn't uh, hang in his world. 
I, I, I wouldn't want to go and do what all the stuff they do, like all that the abuse on their body all the time and all the traveling and stuff like that. Yeah. But I don't, those guys would last on the jiu-jitsu mat with me either. So Yeah, I don't think they want to get punched <laughs> in the face for real. Yeah, I, I'd, rather, <laughs> I'd rather be known for, for being good than being tough. You know, yeah, I, exactly. I was a super tough in that regard because they, they're taking constant pounding on their body and injuries and, and everything else. Like I, I wouldn't want to be involved in all that crap. You know, saying this, what I wouldn't want to do, I wouldn't want to work for Vince McMahon. When I've heard yeah, about right, it. Get fired. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really tell how much of that's an act, though. That's that's still soul theater. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, don't know, I watched Bret Hart's documentary, and that motherfucker hated Vince McMahon. <laughs> by the time he yeah. ended up in his career, a lot of people so, don't like their bosses. But speaking of bosses, what's uh, what's Dana like? Dana is awesome. I, uh, you know, there are going to be some people that don't like him, and you know, everyone's going to have you know people that you know hate and things like that. But every experience I've ever had with Dana has been awesome. You know, I don't know if it's because you know I'm from Boston. I don't know if he's you know he's from Boston too. I don't know if it's that. But like every single interaction I've ever had with Dana was has been amazing. You know, he's always so, gone out of his way. He's always been real cool to me. So Joe, tough question. Your last couple of fights, you've been getting like. I might get this wrong. Knockout of the night, fight of the night, sub of the yep. night. Like you've been getting those bonuses like wild. Yep. Do you think it helps to be on Dana's good side for that sort of thing? Um, it, it helps. I mean, it certainly doesn't hurt. Um, you know, but I mean, I've gotten, I think I've, I've gotten six or seven of them out of like nine fights. I think. Um, you yeah, know, so I'm, it's, I think it's I'm crazy. tied for the record in them. Um, you know, but I, I think honestly, it's more so because of how I fight. Like I, I go out there trying to rip your arm off or cave your head in every single time, you know, and I go push as hard as I can for as long as I can. And, and that's why I, I, I get tired sometimes, I guess, out. But, um, you know, I'm going out there to finish you and, and to hurt you as fast as I can. And and that's what they want. You know, they don't want to see wrestlers that go out there and, and just, you know, eke out a decision, you know. Uh, you know, I, I think that's the big thing. You know, it's like I go out there, like I set my hair on fire, and the only way to put it out is by beating the guy. <laughs> so I, Evan Tanner had this this quote. He said that um, when you're an amateur, the most important thing is just a win, right? Get a win; it doesn't matter. You know, like you talked about, that guy that uses exhaustion as a weapon. Yep. As an amateur, that's cool. But as a pro, the show is almost as important as the record. What do you think of oh, that? Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? Like you could take a guy like uh, like John Fitch. He's got a great record in the UFC. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he's arguably one of the the best welterweights in the division, no question. You know. It took him a long time to get to St. Pierre. You know, it's like he should have gotten there quicker. But, you know, when, when you have guys go out and, and they, they decision a lot of people, that's not going to do it. You know what I mean? You've got to go out there and you've got to be exciting, you know. And they'll tell you that. You know, we, we want you to win fights, but we want to, you know, we want to put on good fights. We don't want to see you go out there, you know. And Anderson Silva's done that. He's gone out there and just completely outclassed people and made them look stupid. And it's been horrible, horrible fights because he's not doing a lot. You know, he's not enough to win. He's just he's doing just enough to win and not enough to entertain. Yeah, it seems like when you're at the, when you're that much better than your opponent, then you can just you don't even really even have to hit him. You can just dance around him and make him look stupid for. Yep, he fought, or 20 minutes. Uh, fought Tali's lates, and the fight was like that. He fought Damian Maya, and he did that. And basically, he wanted to prove that he was better, which he did. And the fights went so long; it was like you're watching him just kind of dance around a guy that's clearly better. And he he's doing just enough to just like almost like agony and torture of, of letting the match go on instead of trying to flip, put you away. Speaking of Anderson Silva, man, so this guy fought at two hundred five, and yep. he, he didn't seem to be given. For people that don't know, Anderson Silva is uh, it's, there's kind of two fighters on the planet who trade this best pound for pound guy, and he's one of them. You know, GSP being the other, and um, uh, oh my train of thought. Oh oh, so he fought at two hundred five when, when he normally fights at one eighty five. Yep, and he didn't seem to be giving up any strength at all. Now they want to do a catch weight between him and GSP. GSP fights at one seventy. What's gonna go? Like, how is this guy who's easily strong enough to to roll with most two hundred fivers? What's he gonna do against GSP? How is this gonna be a reasonable fight? What, I, what are you I think. Thinking? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's gonna be tough for Anderson to get down. You know, I I don't know how tough of a cut he has to eighty five, but I know that like in between fights, like he'll blow up to like two twenty. You know, two two twenty, you know, or so. Which, you know, so. I think it, when what's the catch weight? Do you know? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if they, they. I don't think they've even talked about it yet. You know, if they were gonna find a catch weight, they'd probably find like one eighty or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that. Oh. I don't. I don't know how low he's gonna get. It's gonna be 180. tough. One eighty. I think that's like hardly a cut. Well, I mean, one eighty five is his normal weight. One eighty. Five pounds. Seems... 
five pounds is like cutting off your fingers or something. When you're if you're like really cutting hard, if he's cutting hard to make eighty five as is, he's not gonna be able to cut a whole lot more. Do they weigh GSP before or after he covers himself with Vaseline? <laughs> Reskate be- because it it really will make a big difference because he puts a lot of it on, at yeah. least three jars. There's all kinds of things people can do for grease. It, it's so like uh, people are putting up like animated gifs of of Anderson, uh, you know, rubbing the oil off his off the Vaseline off his face and then rubbing it on his chest and things like that. I've heard st- up stories about guys like taking baths and like baby lotion like the night before <laughs> there's like there's so the night many before like five minutes before that guy's glowing <laughs> in the yeah. ring there's, so there's, you there's mentioned a- anderson with the with the vaseline did you mean gsp or anderson i think i think on anderson on the on the last one i, I saw i mean i'm, I'm oh, sure okay. people trolling more than anything but you see him touch his face and you see him touch his chest it's like you know <laughs> what is going on you know it's like it was probably hmm. nothing but you know, people are always looking for something. You know. So, do you hang out on Share Dog, or is that just like I hate Share Dog? No, I, I shouldn't say I hate Share. I hate the the Share Dog forum. I like Share Dog dot com, uh-huh. uh, which is like the news site. I, I, I like Share Dog for that stuff. I hate the forum though. I, well, the the site that I love is MixedMartialArts.com. dot com. They uh, mm-hmm. they have an awesome forum. They probably have the most guys um, that post on the Dana. Like the UFC reads MixedMartialArts.com dot com every day. Um, you know, Dane is on MixedMartialArts.com dot com all the time. Shane Carwin's post on there all the time. I, I, I used to post on there a ton. I don't post as much anymore, but I'm always reading. Like There's a, there's a bunch of very legitimate people that, that post there a lot because they, they keep a better reign on, on like, the other posters. You know, like, they don't just have people just attacking fighters so much. Like, they're good about you know, making sure you know, there's not a mob on fighters and things like that. Like, they, they do a pretty good job. Hi, right, I got a question. So yeah. Have you ever, you ever run into some, like, some armchair uh, Mr. Miyagi's? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it happens a little bit. Usually it's people just trying to be helpful. They're like, oh, you know, well, I, I did this or I did that and I can help you out or, you know what I mean? It's, it, it's usually not people being, you know, disrespectful, but there's always people trying to, you know, help out and show you things and, and all that kind of stuff. All right, man, I got a question. All right. So you're standing in line at the movie theater, right? Yep. The, the line is all men, but just normal men, right? Like people at the movie theater. Some are 22, some are 48. Yep. How many normal people can you beat up at one time? Normal people, I don't know. Like five year olds, I could, I could beat up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I like where like you're headed with this. You sound like you've been watching my videos. <laughs> <laughs> are we talking one after an- another? Or are we talking? No, we're, t- one just- we're talking like the no, ma- in the, the scene from Matrix mob. Two when like they just mob. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, you got two, right? I mean, you can I handle. You're shots, striking alone. If I pick my shots and I kind of ran around and I could pick off the weak ones. I could maybe get like maybe three or four. It's so tough because you know with, with, punching is a terrible way to fight because you break your hand, you you get messed up, all this other stuff. And jujitsu is is good for one on one. It's really not good for a mob. You just get stomped to death. Right. Uh, I don't know. Probably. But it's not as if you can't strike. It's not as if you're not throwing punches every day in the gym. No, 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 no. I can, but I mean, I'm I'm wearing hand wraps and I'm wearing boxing gloves and things like that. You know, your hand is not made. For smashing things, it's made for grabbing. All right, how about how about it? Fingers bent. How, how many old guys are in this line? <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm talking about your your normal movie theater line makeup, right? Like you know, you're gonna have some. I'm gonna so you call could, them all of fighting age, right? Let's make well, it at least kick, seventeen. Can I kick down the guy in the wheelchair to cutting the tickets? Is he, does he count? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know, I don't know that the wheelchair guy should be your first target. I think you should take out a guy who's going to bring some offensive trouble. Yeah, well, I'm what you guys? No, here. you want to use the wheelchair guy as like a weapon. Like if you could get him up to speed and just go ramming speed ahead, you could take out a couple guys, bash knee kneecaps in, shins, whatever. You want to go That's after the good. biggest, toughest, affliction wearing, tattooed d bag in the entire world. <laughs> Make a statement, you know. Try to destroy some morale, maybe get a yep. couple people hesitant. I, yeah. See, I'm going the other way. You want to grab the smallest guy first, you may be able to use him as a weapon. Yeah, like, but see, I, I think that you're going to get other guys that normally wouldn't get involved as quick, and that they see you hitting a kid, they're going to be like, oh, that's wrong, and then they're going to come after you. Yeah, but they're going to they're gonna be thinking to themselves, I don't want him to hit me with that kid. Yeah. <laughs> if you hold you're him by the feet, little kid? got... Yeah, like like what is that um that medieval thing where you've got the chain with the ball on the end? A mace the or something? Is that yeah. called a mace? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Flail. So as you think it's about it, a flail it, with a chain. A flail with a chain. All right. Well, well, hear me out here. The body of like a six year old is kind of like a flail with uh-huh. the chain, right? I mean, you got the the sort of heavy item on the end, his skull, and then the, like <laughs> a, a flexible little body, his spinal cord. 
Kind of. I, I, I get I got kids <laughs> that train at my gym, and it, it like they would absolutely overtake me. Like we got like like maybe like ten or fifteen of my little kids that are probably like six to eight. They would absolutely get the best of me. <laughs> like really, if, if, if they so were fearless, if they were fearless, they would they would get me. How See, many of them had could you take though? Many times. How many? How many five year olds? Yeah, yes. I mean, look, it's got to be a bigger number than four, three or four. Yeah, you good for yeah, eight? No, five, five year olds. I don't know. I think thirty or forty. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, <laughs> like, all right, all right. I'm about I'm about six one, 185 pounds. I'm in decent shape. I work out maybe one day a week. I'm pretty sure I can take nine to ten five year olds. Okay, because I'm I figure I drop. I I like just like you know just you kick one the first punch one. half of them right. Yeah, I'm gonna kick. I'm gonna kick at least one right in the chest, and he's gonna be down for the count. And he's falling into another one who's gonna be slowed down considerably, and then I just start running. And that way, the fast ones are nearest to me, but the the slow fat kids are way in the back. So I can beat up on the fast ones and then m- work my way back to them. Yeah, you know, and then I think that once the kids, they catch up to you, they're going to grab onto your legs. Like th- That's what you don't want to happen. Grab- well, yeah, you're going to avoid it for as long as you can. But I think once they grab you, I think yeah, that's going to give you a strong foundation. Then you just pick at all the other ones that are trying to get in. <laughs> I don't, I, no, so you're going the to use, use their leg grabbing as, like, your base. Yes. And then just start working the punches. Yep. No, see, I, I think we're missing it. You're missing out on a crucial part of this. Like, 10 five-year-olds weigh what? Five hundred? How much is a five-year-old weigh? Oh, maybe uh, 80 pounds. 80 pounds? No, 60 pounds? That's, that's, that's 80 is a lot. Yeah. 60 no, pounds. No. Maybe in America. All right. <laughs> <laughs> talking about six, seven hundred pounds of people on you all of a sudden. That's a lot of weight. That's like that reverend guy that, that hates wings so much. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that is <laughs> awesome. It's just... It, it's gonna feel like the blob is on you. No, if, the, if, the, it, the, and, and plus, let, five let, let me make a cool. statement. I got no problem with Reverend Burns. I know we're just joking, <laughs> Reverend Burns. But then, no, they're gonna go for your balls. They're gonna be biting, clawing, scratching. I don't want those things anywhere near me. I want to keep my distance. Deal with them one at a time. If, if I'm fighting five year olds, I'm wearing a cup and I'm getting gloves. I'm wrapping my hands <laughs> and I'm knocking these little shits out. What kind of gloves right. do you think? Would you go with the like the five ounce gloves, or do you want the sixteen ounce boxing gloves? Um no I want I want my MMA gloves so I can grab. Okay, okay. Stay, <laughs> stay, right. stay gloves. Maybe you can sling some sling some five year olds around. All right. So you, uh, you think oh, you could oh, take yeah. Akibono? Uh yeah, probably. Yeah. For probably. people to know that's a sumo wrestler and he went up yep. against Hoist Gracie and uh Gracie used his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu against him and got the win. I, it was some sort of weird thing. What do you get? Like a finger lock or something? Um I think a Gogo Plata or Omo Plata. Gogo Plata. Is that what it was? I think so. That sounds like a bad guy from a Mario's game. It should be. <laughs> hey, man, uh, steroids. You know, UFC fighters getting busted for steroids. Do you think they're more widespread than the guys getting caught? You think? Um, I'd say there are definitely guys that are using that aren't getting caught here and there. You know, because they don't they don't test every fighter every single time. They'll test like all the title fights. They'll test the main event, which a lot of times is you know the title fight, and then they'll do a couple fights that are random. You know, like I, I've heard of, you know, guys, you know, hearing that, you know, they were going to test every single fighter on the card. I've heard of guys like saying they got hurt or they pull out or things like that, you know. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm sure there are other guys that are using, but I don't think it's as, as crazy as some people think. You know, I you think, think that you, can, you, know, you can tell by their body type, like some guys are just perfect specimens. Yeah. You know, sometimes those guys, are the guys that you sometimes are just really good genetics. Like I've seen some guys that, you know, that never freaking touch a weight. And they are jacked. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. There's guys that, that don't like weight train. Well, I'm, I'm just saying just in, in general, like whether it's a oh, okay. or, or guys or whatever, you know, pretty much everybody oh, okay. is going to, you know, do weights and stuff like that. But I've had guys that, you know, like the strongest guy in my entire gym is my size, doesn't lift weights at all. He, he's a freaking, he's a trash man. He's, he's dumping big ass barrels of trash all day long. And that guy grabs you and you can't move. And he's like my size. He's unbelievably strong, you know, and, and he looks ripped, but never touches weights. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. you never know. Reminds me of Greg McDonald, where I used to work at. Yeah, I've seen you, that. A lot of, you see that a lot. Like guys who work in, um, who do work that's like heavily, heavy manual work, like uh, brick masons and uh, people who are working in plants, moving boxes and stuff. And those guys end up being, just because of the weird movements that they have to make, the awkward movements yep. with that much weight. It's it's you can't get that with I mean I guess you could get it with weight training but you wouldn't want to yeah it's ridiculous so you never know I don't know I remember Greg could hold me down with one hand <laughs> <laughs> Joe you, you figure know, out what you're doing uh, for Valentine's Day yet 
I have no idea. I, I, I should figure that out. I'm, uh, I'm actually, I got to drive to New Jersey tomorrow morning. Uh, one of my guys is fighting on the Strike Force undercard, the, the Fedor fight. Uh-huh. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be gone from tomorrow morning at like 6 until Sunday night. And then my girlfriend's going to be here. And then Monday's Valentine's Day. So I, I, I should probably figure out something pretty quick. So you'll be there at the Fedor fight. You'll be ringside? Uh, I, I won't be ringside. I'll be in the back room. My guy's like, he's one of the first fights. It's like the... I got you. And a card. And then, uh, but yeah, I'll be I'll be there for the fight after, though. I'll be there watching. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Man, it, I don't know. Maybe I should be paying more respect, but I haven't seen Fedor fight elite talent in a while. And the elite talent he faced kind of got exposed when they hit the UFC, guys like Crow Cop. Yeah, like, I, I, don't, I don't think that, you know, Fedor would do that good in the cage. Like, I, I think part of the reason why he lost his last fight was because of the cage. You know, I think that he was he was in the triangle. He tried to, you know, kind of throw the legs to the side, and he kind of ran into the fence a little bit. Um, you know, it's kind of intimidating, you know, being in a cage versus a ring. It's a, it's a very different experience, um, you know, and it, and it is different. You know, it's so much different. You know, if I have my guys fighting in a, a ring or a cage, we have to completely, you know, game plan differently based on where it is, you know. And, and yeah, I mean, I don't, think he, I don't think he was exposed necessarily, but he definitely doesn't have the intimidation factor that he had before, which was a huge advantage. I got a couple questions here. All right, all right you're in a, you got a guy on submission hold. Is there any part in the back of your mind where you don't want to hurt him? Like um, you ever hold back? He, he kind of yes and no. I mean, in a fight, I'm not I'm not thinking about it too much. Like if I if I have like very good control over him and there's no way he's getting away, I'm not gonna crank it to be a jerk. Um, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll I know the range of motion. Um, you know where he is comfortable, where he's uncomfortable, and he's gonna tap, and then where I'm destroying his arm. You know, I, I I understand the differences, so I'm not gonna just destroy someone's arm just because I have it. But I'll 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 give him like half a second at the comf- at the uncomfortable range, and then hips to the sky, and I'm I'm, I'm sending. Yeah, him. there's a difference between winning a fight and like messing somebody up for a year. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right, All right I got Joe. another question. Um, Go ahead, Wings. Um, has ego ever bothered you while you're while you're in a while you're preparing for a fight? Like has like you have crossed your mind or whatever. Like just you know pride and stuff. Um, a, a little bit. I mean, like the main thing you got to be careful you don't get hurt in training. Um, you know, so I mean, ego and, and pride and all that stuff can be you know tough. But like fighting in general is a very very tough sport because even if the other guy's better, you have to be mentally prepared and, and ready to a get your ass kicked and keep on fighting. But more importantly, you have to go into the fight thinking that you are going to destroy this guy and there's nothing he can do and that you are just a better fighter and you're going to destroy him. You know, and, and you have to go with that mindset, but if things get rocky and you start to lose, you've got to be ready to push on to it. It's, it, it's way tougher than people think. The, the psycho- psychological aspect of it is huge. Hmm. All right, so you're, what's a day in the life of Joe like, right? How much are you training? What are you doing on a normal day? Uh, right now I lift three days in the morning. So like I'll get up at, I'm up at five thirty in the morning and I leave my house at six. I drive like an hour to go and lift because it's a really good place. Uh, Mike Boyle strength conditioning, which is like, it's a very, very good place, but it's not very close, but I, I think it's worth the drive. So I drive there and I, I lift from like seven to eight thirty. drive home. I'm home by like nine thirty, ten o'clock, basically eat, hang out for like an hour or so. Go to the gym at twelve, teach like a grappling class or something. Um, then I'll, I'll box later in the afternoon, and then I'll do all my MMA stuff. So I'm probably I, I work out from you know anywhere from six to eight hours most days. Wow! Right. And then so we, and then for all my other time, I'm, I'm on Xbox playing Call. Which of Duty. games you playing? <laughs> Call of Duty mostly. Mostly Call of Duty. You know, I, I got I um I, I was way behind on all the first person shooters. Like I, I got in. When I had uh, ACL surgery, um, you know, I was basically I was laid up in bed and I, I couldn't do anything. So I was playing uh, World at War, but I was way behind. Like I was awful. And then from there, I, I went back to to regular Modern War, uh, regular uh, COD Four, and then I got Modern Warfare, and that was like the first one that I got like when it was new. And uh, and I still I was still playing catch up. You know, like all my friends have been playing since you know like Halo Three, and you know they get tons and tons of experience. You know, and I played on the computer a little bit, like Counter Strike and things like that in college, but not never seriously. It'd be like you know, screw around here and there. Um, you know, so I, I basically I stick the first person shooters. I play I like Gears of War. Um, I like Transformers just because it's badass because it's Transformers. 
Uh, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, mainly, you know, mainly Call of Duty, though. You know, a little bit of Transformers, a little bit of Left 4 Dead, a um, little bit of Gears of War, a little bit of Ghostbusters. That's about it. Oh, Ghostbusters is awesome. Ghostbusters is awesome. <laughs> I, I can't play it for very long, but it's definitely awesome. I just like it because it's got some of the actors' voices in it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. I thought they were supposed to do a Ghostbusters 3 here in a minute. They were talking. Uh, I, think, uh, I think that someone put the hold on it. It might have been Bill Murray, actually. Bill Murray's hmm. bitch. Well, Bill you Murray needs to, to hurry up. He's getting old. <laughs> yeah, he hardly looks like Bill Murray anymore. How did we get you on the podcast, man? Everyone wants to know how we landed Joe Lozon. Um, I, I, someone put up a... I don't know if I, I, I read I, – I'd known about Painkiller already for a while. I'd seen YouTube things, but, I, like, I really don't listen to that many podcasts. You know, and the time was kind of bad because, like, normally, like, one of those days that I'm up early is Friday. So if I'm up at 530, I'm usually – by the time I get – I just got back to the gym. I just barely made it on here. By the time I get back from the gym, shower, eat, I'm, I'm, it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to bed. And, uh, you know, but I, I started listening one day, and I, then I, just, I couldn't turn it off. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I listen – I think I listen, like – Two weeks. I listened one week. I didn't say anything at all, and then you. St- and then we were posting on Reddit like right after, and then we we're going back and forth. So then I, I was paying t- attention a little bit more, and I don't know. I, I do all kinds of radio shows and, and things like that, so it's definitely awesome doing a Call of Duty one. Yeah, game. so people that f- that follow me know that I'm I'm kind of like a Reddit aholic. You know, I, I go there and I spend That's... time on it every day, and uh, just when I think it was... never no, when you. No, no, oh, yeah. no, no, yeah. no, no, yeah, never, um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, like Joe replied to me. It was like JoeLozon.com was the guy's like Reddit handle. I was like, no way, this is Joe. And then I asked him um, uh, if we were to get into a fight, do you think that I could last 15 seconds no striking? And do you remember what you said? Uh, I think I said I would give you give it to you out of respect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll allow you to last 15 seconds in a fight with me. I was like, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, and then like, so we went back and forth on the Reddit bit, and then um, last week on the podcast, you were active in the stream, and yep. we asked you to join, and, and then yeah, Joe Lozon, man. So when can we expect this fight? Huh, I hate oh, that. between Joe and I? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't even outrun him. No, <laughs> Yes, he's in the air. He's gonna be. Hey, he just there. said he won't break your arm. Yeah, yeah be nice. he's not. Dude, gonna I would go. I, I roll with Joe. I'd see how long I could last. I'd let you. I'd film it and put it on my channel. I wonder. Yeah, awesome. I might take the fifteen second challenge. <laughs> <laughs> be like, I, he'd be like, go. Woody turns around, runs, and starts climbing up the cage, <laughs> jumping off the walls. It's gonna take you more fifteen seconds to over that cage. Nine, ten. Woody's like trying to go higher. Joe's got him by the ankles. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking. 15 seconds, like it. If I could stop him from grabbing my head, it seems like it would take a couple seconds to mo- hit most. Of <laughs> like, is he gonna hit a flying armbar on me or something? I, I got, I, I got a lot of good to me. I got flying arm locks, flying triangles. Uh, flying keep my one. elbows in and try not to let you grab my head. At 15 See, Woody, seconds. Woody, your strategy has to be the same as when you're attacked by a bear. You want to roll into it, <laughs> play dead. All he can do then is kick you a little. There was a, there was a, there was a guy. This is probably like. Six years ago, seven years ago now. So I hadn't been training that long, like only like three years probably. And um, we were at a local fight, and there was a guy that was flown in from Arizona. And, you know, he's supposed to, you know, be one of the, the he's supposed to be the main event. And then something happened, like his opponent missed weight or, or something, you know. So we were just all kind of hanging out. You know, I was there early. And um, my friend was, was talking to this other guy. His name was Ray. And uh, I was like, Ray, I'm, you know, and, and Ray was talking, you know, just kind of like talking out of his ass a little bit. And, um, you know, and Rick's like, Ray, he he could beat you in a minute, and Ray's like, ah, oh, no way, no way. Like he could tap you out in a minute, and Ray's like, no way. So we jumped in the in the ring, you know, before it's like the place is empty, there's no one there, and <laughs> we, I, I told him, and then to add insult to injury, I'm like, whatever submission you want, you you name it. So he named it. He said an arm lock, and then I flat arm locked him in like 20 seconds, and he, he just <laughs> cried. So was that guy a fighter at all? Like a professional fighter, flown in from Arizona. Yeah. Huh. Yep. And he didn't keep his elbows in. This brings this brings the question: Have you ever seen a fluke like somebody just straight up mess up in a fight where they should have won? Oh yeah, I mean it, it happens. You know, I, I've been tapped out by guys at my gym that are you know like beginners. And I mean it's like you know, we get this. I get this kid, one kid at my gym. Well, I'm never gonna hear the end of this. This kid, uh, <laughs> Brendan. Who uh you know he's a good wrestler you know wrestles at uh you know one of the the, the town uh, high schools around us 
And uh, he's like 6'2", probably like 160 pounds. And, uh, you know, like, he's going for a choke on me. And, like, I thought I was safe, and I kind of didn't give the choke any respect. And uh, I tried to get out of it, and it's kind of, like, got to the point where, like, he tightened it up and tightened it up. It got to the point where, like, I couldn't get out of it. And he tapped me. You know, and he's been training with us, you know, not long, maybe a year and a half, two years, something like that. But he caught me. You know, it definitely happens. So now you're did, a pickup you, line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you ever, like, when, so when I, when I was training, if a guy came in, and, and sometimes wrestlers would do this, they'd be, like, super aggressive and put, like, you know, just like, kind of beyond the etiquette of what was going on. The yep. instructor would go run up against him, and usually, like, he'd just do takedown drills on him, slam the guy on his back repeatedly and, until he sort of settled down. Yeah, do you well, ever we, do that, like corporal punishment? Always. Yeah, we have <laughs> – our big thing, like the, the big theme for my school is we do knee on chest. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, if, if you're psychotoy, you just you, – you pop up to knee on chest and you grab, you know, under their leg, you grab under their neck and you just freaking like look them dead in the eye and you just grind your knee into their chest until they can't move. And it's like it just kind of lets them know like I can murder you right now and there's nothing you can do to stop it. And like when I was like – I was like, I was pretty talented at jujitsu and stuff, like right off the bat. So I was like 150 pounds soaking wet when I started, and I would do that to guys. Like I would be the guy, like you know, my my, my trainer Joe Palmer, like, hey Joe, go uh go roll with this guy, give him the give him the special treatment, and I would just <laughs> and like and, and they're like usually like you know they could be like a marine or, or some big juice head or whatever, and then then they're getting tormented and tortured by this kid that's 150 pounds. That, you and, know. and you do that because they misbehaved, right? Like because they're you know this this. Juice head or marine, you know, found himself uh, better than some guys, so they bring in you. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of times, just they just don't know. You know, they just they're being rough. You know what I mean? And like, you just and, put them in their place, let them know what's yeah, what. Yeah, like you know, because they'll we'll roll with them, and, and you know, we don't crush them. You know what I mean? Like we'll, we'll beat them, but we're not. You know, we're not like hurting them too much. You know, it's it's like you make them uncomfortable, but you don't. You know, go out of your way to, to be a jerk. Um, but if if they're being rough and they're not giving that same you know courtesy to others then they get it the worst of anyone. You know, they'll get, you know, choked and you hold the choke a little bit long and all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a question. Uh, you got a lot of fight experience. Have you ever been told how to defend against a knife? Um, usually if they have a knife, you're getting cut. Um, I mean, the the, the, the core concept for jiu-jitsu is, is two-on-one. You know what I mean? So you would try to use both your hands to control the, 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 the knife as best as possible, but... For the most part, I mean, there are guys like mostly crazy guys that are out there that will, you know, try to do knife fighting and all that kind of stuff. But honestly, if the other guy's got a knife, you're getting cut. You know, you might not get cut super bad, but you're definitely getting cut. Yeah, I've seen that simulation where like you give the one guy a sharpie and you try to go against him without him marking on your white shirt, and it's yeah. fucking impossible. Like, like yeah, think about that. You're definitely getting cut. You know, um, you know, but you better hope that guy doesn't. You, you know, that that guy better hope you don't take the knife away from him. Oh, yeah, cause, yeah, it's going to go really bad then. Do you think there's many guys who aren't pro fighters who could hang with pro fighters? Like, are there, are there lots of guys who just train, maybe they're Navy SEALs or something, who could who could survive in the ring or in the cage, um, I should say? Yeah, I mean, there's some. I, I don't think necessarily Navy SEALs as much. Uh, I'm sure yeah. there are some. You know, like, those guys are, are, are so different, though. I mean, those guys, you know, they're taking some kind of, you know, pill when they wake up in the morning to get them going, and they're taking something to put them to bed, you know, to sleep. It's like... Those guys are on. Yeah, you know, they're on speed pretty much. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And you know, I'm sure there's some guys like, I'm, I'm sure there's, you know, at this point, there's all kinds of Navy SEALs that are, you know, brown belts and black belts in jujitsu. You know, yeah, I'm sure right. they hang or pro boxers or, or whatever. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely guys out there. There's some guys that are MMA fighters that do great in the gym, and they do they fall apart and do terrible when it comes time in front of them. All right, all right I got a question. Do you think you could take Shaq? Yeah, Shaq, the Jack basketball Jack player. Shaq, a fan, and he's he's with the Boston Celtics now. Uh, probably not. This guy's enormous. You know, no? just wanted just a guy that's way bigger than you. Was like, whoa, Shaq, I just imagine Shaq. You're gonna need some of this icy hot when I'm done with you, boy. <laughs> catch him in a submission or something, but like, uh, he, he was front row when, uh, two fights ago. Uh, the UFC came to Boston, so I got the fight on that card, and uh. I was my my coach was standing on like the the raised barrier around the outside edge, and Shaq stood up in in the front row and put his arms up, and he was taller than my coach, who was like four feet off the ground. It's like he's ridiculous. Just, just too big. Hey, who's the best pound for pound fighter? Um, I think Saint Pierre. I think. Really, that's my pick too. But I thought it was the unpopular one. No, I mean I I think that Saint Pierre. Like I always say that I think the most important aspect of a fight is wrestling. 
because if say what do you say we fight and I have the better boxing. Well, I need to have the better wrestling too because you might have better jiu-jitsu than me. So I need to have the better wrestling to keep it up. And vice versa, if you had the better wrestling, then you would take the fight to the ground and then you would beat me there. So unless you're way better on the ground and way better on your feet, wrestling is the most important thing. You know, like everyone keeps talking about this Anderson Silva St. Pierre fight. I think that even though he's the the smaller guy, I think St. Pierre still wins that because his wrestling is so much better. I he think took that down Koscheck at will. No. Yep. Pretty much. Yeah. And, and he he completely stuffed all of Koscheck's takedowns, which were super impressive. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. For people that don't know, Koscheck was an elite level college wrestler, which usually means that that guy has the takedown advantage. You know, and not only are they great at takedowns, but they're great at stuffing your takedowns. And uh, GSP, who wasn't, as far as I know, like celebrated wrestler in his younger days, has become one of the best in the world. Yeah, like he never wrestled. I don't think he ever wrestled. Wrestling. It was all after when he was fighting. Talk about, talk about wrestling. What, what about Brock Lesnar? He, he had a pretty big wrestling background. Yeah, Lesnar was a, a D1 wrestler. You know, he was a beast wrestler, you know. Uh, Kane was a better wrestler, you know, and I, I think that was why Kane won the fight, Kane Velasquez, you know. He Kane also had the bad hands. Space in too, though, right? Oh, yeah, he messed <laughs> up that. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So here's a question. So now that you're, uh, you know, you're Joe Lozon, you're famous, etc., do old high school friends, like, treat you different? Do they have their hand out? Do they try to get things from you? Um, it, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, like I was super quiet when I was in high school. Like I didn't hang out with, like I had a couple friends that I hung out with all the time, but like I wasn't super outgoing. Like I never went to prom. I never went to, I went to graduation, but that was it. I never went to any dances. Like I, I never did anything. Like I was, I was pretty antisocial in high school. So like I'll see people out and I have no problem. Like I'll go and I'll talk to whoever, you know what I mean? Like I was, I was pretty, I wasn't outgoing, but I was friendly with whoever. Um, you know, it, it's kind of, it's weird because like some people that like, that I was good friends with. They, like, feel bad, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, almost, like, even, like, talking to me, like, they're bothering me or something. And I love to hear from those guys. But, you know, then there's other guys, like, I'll see out, like, we'll be at a restaurant or a bar or something like that. And they'll, like, you know, they'll come over and they'll want me to go over and say hi to their friends. Like, oh, yeah, you know, me and Joe were, like, we were boys in high school. It's like, dude, I don't think I ever talked to you before today. <laughs> like, I'm not a fan of those kids. Like, I don't, I'll go and say hi. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not being, like, a snob like that. But don't try and impress all your friends about how we were best friends in high school when we weren't. You know what I mean? Like, there are a lot of kids, and they know who they are, that, like, I hung out with that I was friendly with, things like that. You know, but if I've never, ever, ever seen you outside of school, don't go and act like we were best friends. You know, and, and it, it's kind of, it's awkward, but I, I, I still, you know, do whatever. You know, I'll say hi, I'll do whatever. Yeah, I'm SOL in that department. All my friends got too many damn kids now. Yeah. <laughs> my friends are starting to pop out kids, too. <laughs> Uh, do you get brothers and sisters? I have two brothers. Yep. Uh, Danny's uh, Danny's my youngest brother. Uh, he's actually the youngest UFC fighter ever. He, he uh, you know, he trains. My brother Stephen has nothing to do with fighting. He just does his own thing. Does the family dynamic revolve like the fact that you're you know famous and on, on pay per view and such? Does that like change things? At, um, not like really. I mean, it, it's it, it's a little bit. No, I mean it's it's pretty much you know the same as always. You know what I mean? It's it's not a big deal. You know like. Honestly, I don't even, I don't even, I'm not going to say I'm not famous at all, but it's like, you're talking like F-level celebrity right there. You know what I mean? It's like very small number of people know, you know, who it is compared to, you know what I mean? Like a Tom Brady and a Shaq and all that kind of stuff. It's not yeah, even I mean, just Russia. If you get, if you get recognized yes, out in public, you're, you're some form of celebrity. Yeah, yeah. you know what? That does happen. That happens. Like, pretty much if I go anywhere, like if I ever go out, like I go out to dinner or something like that, it's not like there's mobs of people, but someone will always come over and say hi. You know what I mean? It happens yeah. pretty much every time I go out, but it's not like so, uh, it's not an inconvenience. It's not annoying. It's not you know. It's not you know like paparazzi level or any of that crap. Yeah. Is Do it, you ever get so, somebody coming up to you wanting to fight you? Has that ever happened? Uh no. Nope. You know, usually everyone's pretty cool. But like I, I said, I'm I'm real good at diffusing situations. If someone was, you know what I mean? You know, I, I'm I'm real good. I'm like oh, you know, I'm like oh, dude, you would kick my ass. You know, like, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I play it you said off you were like, into you said you were in backyard wrestling, right? Yep. Have you have you ever had somebody get come to you to beat somebody else up during um, my youth? <laughs> I did. I did. I, I actually I didn't really do it. Uh, there was a kid that uh, a guy that actually trains with us now, uh, Lee Bean, and uh, he was like, I'm, I'm from East Bridgewater, which is a different town than Bridgewater, and and Lee Bean was like this heavyweight wrestler um, from Bridgewater, and uh, like for years. I was hearing about this kid, Lee Bean, like there were other kids in my high school trying to get set up me to fight him. You know, I've been doing jiu-jitsu for a while. And, uh, 
you know, and I fought other kids like at parties and things like that where like I went specifically to fight so and so. And uh, they wanted me to fight this kid, Lee Bean, and I'd never met him. And then when I did, he almost like, I was, we were training together, and he almost broke me in half. He's enormous. Like, I could never, like, that's why I say, like, you know, trying to fight Shaq. You know what I mean? It's like, you got a guy that's 300 pounds, it's athletic. You know what I mean? You're in trouble when you're 150. Yeah, really? Shaq's arm's so, about as big as you. <laughs> yeah. I was expecting the, the story to end differently. So the Lee Bean of today still gets the Joe today. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, I, I, cause he's so big, you know, what I mean? and he's never made fighter now. He's got, you know, uh, oh. he's got a ton of wrestling experience. He wrestled at Brown, you know, had like a full scholarship there for, for wrestling and things like that. Like, so a, a ridiculous, and he's one of those like athletic fat kids. Like he's 260 pounds and can walk on his hands upstairs and like, just like a monster athlete, you know? And, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I could, I could hope that I could land that Hail Mary punch and, and knock him out or something. But the reality of the matter is probably that he's throwing me through the fence. <laughs> you ever hit you ever hit somebody with a Hail Mary punch and expected them to go down and they didn't? Um, yeah. I, I have. You know, like Does that demoralize you or anything like that? Like um, does it a little bit. I mean it is demoralizing a little bit, but if I hit someone with a Hail Mary punch, I know that I can hit them with another one. You know, it's like it's usually like if if you're putting everything you have into a punch and you still landed, then you can do it again. Because I've always wondered, you see these things on the movies, you see these guys that can just take a punch and just look at you. I mean, is that really how it happens in some people? It, some people like that. Like, when I've trained with BJ, I've hit him with really freaking hard shots. And he just, like, smiles at me. Like, it, it didn't bother him in the in the least bit. You know what I mean? So, it definitely, you know, it, it's not a very good feeling. Have you ever rolled with Joe Rogan? I haven't. No, I haven't rolled with Rogan. No. no. Is he, did he get a brown belt? Or is he still purple? Um, he's at least a brown belt. He might even be a black belt soon. I don't know. Oh, okay. Ro- Rogan's nasty. Yeah, he, he's real good. Like, I've seen, like, I, I've talked to a lot of people to roll with him and train with him and things like that. And, like, you know, he, he did, like, um, he was always into, like, martial arts and things like that. He did, like, taekwondo and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he, he freaking lifts a lot. He's jacked. And he's, like, a yeah. brown. You know what I mean? Like, he, he trains, you know, consistently, like, you know, because he really, really likes it. You know, some guys train because they have to. Rogan trains because he likes it, you know, and, and, and that that's way scary. Joe Rogan, ain't that that guy from uh, the Fear band Factor. show? Yeah. No, from yeah, Fear Factor. Man show. Well, we, he was on the second cast of the Man Show, right? Not the first yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, and, and of course he was the Fear Factor guy. He um he does the commentating for UFC, and he, yep. he does it really well. He clearly knows what he's doing. Yeah. And he's also uh, active. He likes to train. He's into it. If, I don't it's know if you've it. ever seen him with a shirt off. The guy is jacked. Yeah, he's enormous. But, the yeah. funniest thing I've ever seen out of Joe Rogan, uh, he was on the Howard Stern show one time, and they produced this stripper who pretended like she had a, ch- uh, a child by him. She was like, remember back spring break, two- <laughs> 1999? And he's like, he's like, I was there in 1999. Oh, my God. And they had him going so well. It was awesome. It was- <laughs> but this That's chick stellar. had him convinced that, that, uh, that she was the mother of his, uh, his, his son that he never knew about. Dude, I have seen Joe Rogan against two guys, and they're both awesome. One was just a total hater, right? The guy, like, flamed him on the internet every day. MySpace and, uh, kid. It was he a MySpace kid? Yeah. And, and he really, like, I guess he got under his skin, and Joe invited him to come to his gym. And he just, like, you know, the kid wasn't a fighter. And, and I think, you know, he exhausted him and tapped him out a couple times until it was, like, this point's made. You know, this, what am I doing here? It's like beating up a little kid. And then there was another one. I think there was a comedian. And uh, Joe Rogan and this guy were, like, leaning up against a stage or something, talking. And the guy was, like, poking at Joe, you know, just being sort of verbally assaultive. And he's like, dude, I could choke you out right now. And the guy didn't take it seriously. He didn't, like, he didn't know that Joe was about to step into action. He's like, yeah, right, go ahead, choke me out. And then he did. Like, (laughs) he just guillotined him. (laughs) He guillotined him. And uh, uh, he held it for, like, five seconds. Like, he didn't take him unconscious or anything. And the guy was, like, shocked. Like, oh, my gosh, you know, you really did that. That really hurt. And uh, he's like, I warned you. You know, you invited me. (laughs) That was it. So, uh, yeah, don't push Joe's buttons because he'll he'll take action. Yeah, he definitely knows what he's doing. Yep. Hey, what's your favorite class in Black Ops? Um, I like to run the Galil with dual mags, sleight of hand. Um, and then from there, I, I switch it up. I, like, I, I think right now I'm running Ninja and I forget what my friend, Hardline Pro. Are you prestiging? Um, I was kidding about Ninja. I meant, uh, yeah, no, I, um, <laughs> no, I don't prestige. No. Are you zero or one or where are you? 
Uh, zero. No, I, I prestige on Modern Warfare 2, and I wanted to shoot myself immediately. It's, it's, <laughs> Black Ops wasn't as bad because you can just, you know, you can generally unlock and buy what you want, you know, pretty quick, but I, I just don't see any, any reason for it. I have five classes that, you know what I mean, that I, I can change up based on the game type, and, you know, and I'm, I'm not that worried about it. I, I don't need to have six classes or ten classes or whatever. I'm with you, man. I, I prestiged once because it's a free class, right? The first prestige. Yep. And then after that, I started earning my pro perks, and they yep. were so miserable to get. I yep. suicided so many times, and uh, <laughs> you know, no more. I'm not going to do it again. I, I did the same thing. I unlocked I unlocked every single pro perk, and even the ones that I, I will never, ever use. Like, I hate second chance, like, with a passion, you know? And it pained me to even get to unlock the pro version. But, you know, I unlocked them all, and I'm, I'm never prestiging. Never. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm about forty thousand off gold guns. Oh, nice, nice. nice. Yeah. yeah, but I prestige seventeen times already. <laughs> oh, because you crossed the two platforms. Yeah, yeah both platforms. That's your see wings for the next COD game. You've got to get on PC and be the <laughs> only person who's uh, max prestige on all three platforms. <laughs> <laughs> that would be sick. That would be sick, man. You know what I, I was thinking of doing? I think it'd be neat if I got the PC version. And use my Xbox controller and just saw what I could do, you know, like post up a free for all, see the difference. Because the, apparently the PC well. guys have, uh, I think they have an aiming advantage by using the They mouse. have an aiming advantage, but I've said this before aiming is 10% of Call of Duty. Most of it, you got 20% that's mental, and the other, the rest of it is all line of sight. Whoever sees who first wins. 73% of statistics are bullshit. Just, <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. I, In the I've case of Wings, you of might want to bump that up a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we love you, Wings, man. Hey, I played a lot of Call of Duty. Bears are people, man. Calm down. <laughs> and I, um, I have to say, aiming is the least considered my concern. Aiming, aiming is the last thing that happens. First off, you got to you got to figure out where they're at. That's that's mental, and that's you know scouting. You want to get a good line of sight, such as put yourself on a window behind a box. Something like that. Give yourself the advantage into the gunfight in case there's more than one. Then you aim. Generally, he doesn't even know you're there. So you, you get the first shot on him. And generally, first shot wins most of the time unless connection plays a huge role in it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I agree that the way you navigate the maps, the, you know, predicting your enemy is probably a bigger part than snapping on target. But snapping on target well is an advantage. It'd be, yeah. it'd be something I think you'd give up. I'm just saying, you, if you went on PC, you wouldn't. You you probably wouldn't do as well because you're at the disadvantage on that with versus mouse versus a controller. But mm-hmm. you you wouldn't get blown out. You wouldn't be at the bottom of the list two and twenty four. No, yeah. I mean you got to keep in mind like, like you're pre- if if you're a top ten percent uh, console player, then you're probably a top thirty percent pc player higher than that i mean pc players good pc players are far, few and far between just like console like for every sandy rabbit you got on console you got you know a, a hundred thousand ghost bitches oh, i passed sandy and subs the other day <laughs> you're passing everyone in subs man it, what's the eta on when i get knocked down um i think like less than two weeks. less than two weeks Something like that, yeah. It's coming. You and Jaws are just storming through everybody. But I don't count you anymore, Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, it's totally fair. I even saw you comment on a video. Someone was like, um, uh, are you going to do any more gaming videos? And you're like, no. I picked up 65,000 subs in the last month, and none of them want to see me play video games. Which I think is is the right move. I think that... Like, dude, The not to say that the COD community is uh, like a small little YouTube thing. It's actually one of the more successful little corners of youtube but there are much bigger fish out there and those are the seas that russia will. yeah i in. and i mean it's, it's not just because of that i don't like playing video games as much as is necessary to run a youtube channel as big as mine i like like i i would need to literally play three to four hours a day like like no joke because i mean i just yeah, more with than my that, connection all with my quitters. connection <laughs> yeah with my connection i have a hard time getting getting a gameplay so i'd have to play three to four hours a day just to get the gameplay, and then I'm, I, I'm just not doing that. Plus, to be honest, like this is kind of weird, but I think I'm getting the early onsets of tendonitis in my left hand from gripping a fucking right. controller for ten. You, you, you haven't hours. got carpal tunnel mm-hmm. yet? You a newbie? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've had carpal tunnel since Diablo two. <laughs> yeah, so it's, Joe, it's are no you good. are you about to shed a tear about these work related injuries? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> 
Uh, like Joe, Joe, like I was gonna say it earlier. Like Joe's talking about, he gets on Call of Duty to blow off steam. Man, Call of Duty makes me want to punch somebody. <laughs> <laughs> go join an MMA gym. I plan uh, to. I drop the weight. I know. Well, dude, it's the best way to drop weight. You gotta burn I, fat. I'm, right? I'm, I'm I'm way too big right now, and also have a leg injury to, to deal with as well. I just want to learn how to defend myself, not do anything else. Yeah, I, I'm I'm about. I want to say I'm under 400 pounds at this point because I've dropped a lot of weight in the last month. Dude, yeah, Wings, I wanted to talk about that. That's a tough one that big. So um, I hope none of this is too private. You were going to get financing for surgery. Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah. And, uh, and that financing fell through. And it had nothing to do with Wings. It had to do with the, um, the doc that he was going to use no longer uh, was interested in that kind of financing. Like the, the, the whole company that did the financing went under or something. Am I on target so far? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, so in now that the he lap band surgery, that's what it was going to be. So now that lap band surgery kind of fell through, uh, you've done you've done it, I guess, the old fashioned way, right? You know, you changed your well, diet. I, you, you, some I did pills. it a little different this time. Like I've been on diets before, but this this is the first time I attempted a diet when I had like a fan base that could support you and all this right here. Like um, I, I, I basically took donations and I got enough money to see a a, a dietitian right here in Myrtle Beach, um, Greg Norman, and basically he put me on these pills called let me, I don't see if I'm saying this right, Phentermine, P H E N T E R M I N E. Uh, they're basically speed. What's what they are? That you can't sleep on them. You always have energy. Ephetamine. You always have energy. I get about two or three hours of sleep a day, and you never want to eat. It's the, it's pretty much the same thing to give the Navy SEALs. Um, and the pills are wonder drugs. I mean, literally. it's <laughs> you, they, they, you also get amino acids and protein pills just so my muscles don't deteriorate. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I started I started out slow. I started out doing Thai bow for about 15 minutes a day. And then I, I have like a 25-pound weight. I started doing a little bit of arm exercise. And I bought a bike yesterday, and I, I did about a half hour on the bike to go along with everything else. And I've probably dropped 35 to 40 pounds in the first month. That's awesome. You should. Yeah. Uh, you ever try playing games while you're on the bike? Just I can't do it. I, I, I got way too high standards, and I, I just get mad. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about gaming so, standards, not workout standards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that went without saying Um so in retrospect, are you kind of happy the financing fell through and you went this route instead? Yeah, because I, I was actually didn't want the surgery. My mother was pushing me toward it because she didn't think I had the physical ability to lose weight because basically I have no willpower. <laughs> but um, these pills these pills are what actually are helping me lose weight because as long as I don't think about eating, like unless I like seafood and like, ooh, I want to eat that, I never think about eating. So I, can, I, I went two or three days in the last month where I forgot to eat. It's like... Oh shit! What time is it? You know, you just forget to eat. I mean, your body has no craving to eat whatsoever, and the pills help a lot because at that point, eating becomes something that you have to do, like tying your shoes or putting on a shirt to go outside, instead of something your body wants. If that makes sense. But now you, I mean, you at this point you could eat anything, right? I mean, you've made a choice to eat better food. Yeah, I mean, the the thing with me is. I needed a lifestyle change much more than just a diet. I, I, going on a diet and losing weight is great, and these pills are great, but eventually I'm going to have to wean myself off of these pills. Like I don't want to be addicted to this shit, which costs $100 a bottle for the rest of my life. You know, Eventually, i got to get myself to a point where I have a scheduled meal in the morning, scheduled meal in the day, where I have like basically a schedule where I eat at because I have horrible genetics. Like You talk about those guys that are trash can men or super strong me. Yeah. I yep. eat sandwiches. I gain weight. That's what happens. Yeah, I don't have thyroid problems or nothing. I just I just have a really bad genetic line. Like I'm yep. balding, you know. <laughs> I, got, I got a fat gene. <laughs> <laughs> You're the opposite of Joe. That's <laughs> yeah. I, I I think I have super genetics. Like my dad's like my dad's fifty. Uh, like just started losing his hair just a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, was always like 175 pounds. Got up to 200 and like dieted for like a month and started running and dropped all the weight. Like nothing. Like, I, I definitely got lucky in the genetic department. Yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> my dad was my dad was alcoholic and he was really overweight and he he had no hair. Yeah, but he had hair everywhere else on his body. So I got hair on my shoulders, back, chest. 
<laughs> the, the, way you're talking about, the way you're talking about the pills make you feel with food and stuff, I get like that sometimes. Like I have, like I can eat like a cow. Like I can eat unbelievable amounts of food where you would say like there's no way I could eat it all. And I can put it all away. Like I can eat like a, one of those big ass Carvel ice cream cakes. Like I can sit down and eat the whole thing. Like I can eat so much crap. But at the same time, I can go two or three days without really eating much at all just because I don't even think about it. I just, you know, like you said, you just, it's, it's not something that your body needs. It's just something you have to do. Like I have to remind myself to go and eat. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. What's your cut like headed into a fight? Like what are you walking around at? How much are you cutting? Um, I'm, I'm walking at like between 170 and 175. And I'll usually be that weight until like maybe a week and a half out. And then I'll – like I eat like a fat kid like all the time. Like I really don't diet at all. Um, mm-hmm. I just, I stay away from like crap, like ice cream and candy and all that kind of stuff. You know, for the most part, just in general, just because I just, I don't feel good because I work out so much. If I eat that stuff, I don't feel that good. So I'll mm-hmm. eat ice cream once in a while, but it's nothing like I eat on a normal basis. And, uh, like the, a week out from the fight, I'll be like 168, 170 and I'll just, I'll cut water from there. So I'll, I'll drop 15 pounds in water, like from like Thursday afternoon till Friday at weigh-ins, I'll drop 15 pounds. So you, you heard it cut. You cut water over the course of a week. I mean, you just I mean, you well, take a week people, without drinking. How's that work? Some people do will, will do two different ways. Like the, I know like uh, Jeremy Horn used to do like he would limit it himself to you know like a small cup of water every single day for like two weeks out, and he would slowly dehydrate himself over the course of a couple of weeks, and then he would he would make weight. I do the opposite. I drink like like a gallon to two gallons a day every single day, like starting three weeks out from the fight, two weeks out from the fight. I mean, and, cut, cutting water, that, that doesn't sound healthy at all. It sounds like your liver would be getting destroyed. But it definitely does take a, a toll on your liver, but I do it twice a year. You know, so it's not like I'm not doing it, you know, all the time. Uh, but I, I drink tons of water for a couple weeks, and basically your, your body starts flushing out everything. You, what you're really trying to do is get all the salt and sodium out of your system. And uh, my weight will go up, and that's why I'll be like 72, 74. And, uh, you know, and then as soon as I, 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 I trick my body. I get my body in the habit of dumping out all this water. And then all of a sudden, you know, come Thursday afternoon, I stop giving it water. And it continues to push all the water out thinking it's going to get more, and then it doesn't. And really? then, so you, like, super hydrate going into the fight? Yep, yep, and exactly. Then, huh. Yep. Like, and, well, what, does, what does having water in your body have to do with the fight, though? I mean, like... To, wait, to cut weight. You know, I, like, I fight in uh, at one... So you... So oh, so you're just trying to make the weight scale. Yeah, yeah exactly. this is a guy who weighs 170 to 175 every day and fights at 155. Yeah. So this is his technique for dropping 15 pounds worth of water yep. out of his body. And yeah, some guys, you know, there's a balance. So and, and Joe's of course the expert on this, but you know, it if you cut too much, then you can enter a fight without any you know, energy, without any you know stamina. So, so some but guys I'll just aren't the right clearly. Way. Your brain needs water to a function. Well, and they get yes. exhausted, right? Mm-hmm. So even though they're maybe the bigger guy in the fight, they don't have enough energy to, to last the fight. And they might be better off fighting against bigger people but with you know full energy. I know yeah. I'm not probably not in the position as Asians. Have you ever considered trying fiber pills to drop weight? Uh, I mean, the, the, I, I, honestly, I don't... your body like, can carry almost 20 pounds of poop in it at a time. Yeah, you could be like that one guy from Ultimate Fire that went for the colonic to, to drop weight. <laughs> oh, no, Tim Silver, right? Is that the guy? Remember that? Yeah, no, he... Yay, Brudiger. But Tim pooed himself during one of the Tim, matches. Tim did poop himself during a fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I have no problem pooping. Like I, I spent forty minutes pooping over the course of a day. Nice. <laughs> uh, oh so God. I'll never no. forget. He, he wanted to cut that weight. For those who don't know, he wanted to cut weight uh, for the for the fight on the Ultimate Fighter TV show. Oh, and I know exactly um, what you're talking about. And he, that, and he that went was my to, season. He, he elected to, to to use it colonic rather than I don't remember who the coach of the show was at that time, but uh, that was that, my season. I, that, I got a question. Could you cheat? Was, hold on, let him oh, tell wow. the story. No, that, but he was, was, he was telling me he's like you know you just need to work it off, man. He's he's telling him to get in the sauna. He's telling him to work, and he won't do it. He goes for the colonic. And for those of you who don't know what a colonic is, just Google it. It and it, it was hilarious. <laughs> don't don't image search it. <laughs> <laughs> that was um that was my season. The Ultimate Fighter. BJ Penn was the coach. Uh, that was Gabe Rudiger. He was on my team, and I actually ended up fighting him and beating him up in Boston, like you know, uh, when did I do it last November, this past November, and uh, or August. Uh, but anyways, he uh, he he was running around telling everyone, you know, now he has to make 155 pounds. 
So you have like two days notice. So it, it's much tougher to make weight on the Ultimate Fighter. So he has two days notice, and he's like walking at like 175, 176. Yeah, 178 at one point. Yeah, I, just, I still you know, remember. And, and like he knows that he has to make weight. Or he, he he's gonna have the you know he might have to make weight and he's eating like ice cream cake or we're all coming back from the gym and we're all eating like pasta and things like that because you know we just worked out we're hungry our weight's all pretty good he would eat like half of a pepper while we were eating you know pasta he would make sure that we knew he was eating half of a pepper and then everyone kind of broke off he'd be like pounding bowls of cereal it was like <laughs> awful and then he tried to make weight failed got kicked off the show. I stood over him and squeezed an IV bag into him. The whole thing was just a disgrace. It was pretty bad. Oh, I remember that. Hey, so in the being on the show, got, being on the old. I got, fighter, I got a question how, real quick. Well, you get can off wait this. your turn, Wings. Hold on. <laughs> being on <laughs> the Ultimate Fighter, like what? What was the hard part about that? Was it the mental thing? Was it all the, uh, the no Did contact? You, you have no contact with your family or outside. Like you have no music. You have no internet. You have no Xbox. I know everyone's crying right now. <laughs> um, you have you have no access. You, you have no outside stimulation. So like you you don't get a newspaper. You don't have any kind of books. You have nothing. You have you and the other fighters that are in the house and a bunch of cameramen that don't say anything and they're, they're not allowed to talk to you. So in the show, you came off as better able to deal with that than most of the other fighters. But the editing makes it tricky to figure out what the reality is. Like it, some yeah. guys would go crazy, would hang on the rafters like monkeys, and and you were just kind of like you know steady. Yeah, you know, I, I basically, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely an introvert, introvert to begin with. Like, I'm definitely, you know, I'm, 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 I would rather not say something and think about it than open my mouth and look like a retard. So, um, you know, and, and being on TV, I understood how it can, how you can be portrayed, and how things can be taken out of context, and so I was like very careful with everything I said or did. And uh, like, I would basically, we would get up, we had the early train session, so we we trained at I think seven, so we'd be back t- to the house around like nine nine thirty. We'd eat. I'd go and I'd take a nap. I'd get up. I'd eat. We'd go to the gym. I'd go to. I'd go to bed early. Like I missed so many things because I was sleeping. I was probably sleeping like twelve or thirteen hours a day, whereas everyone else was probably sleeping, you know, six hours a day and just you know acting like retards in the house. I just slept. Just kept myself off the camera. Wings. I'm sorry. I cut you off. What was that? I was wondering if you could cheat that way. You you I, you weigh in. I guess like a day before the match or something like that. Yep. Could you just pound water during that period and get back up to 175 and fight? Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm up to 75, but I'm up to 170 or so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying, know. but you weigh in at 155, mm-hmm. and you could, and if you take all the water out, and you could drink the water again and go into the fight at 175 the next day. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what everyone does. You know, and they'll do, you know, yeah. you can do IVs. You can, you know, you can definitely, yeah. The, 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 why, don't, why don't they just fight at 175 then? Yeah. Because someone will still cut. <laughs> you say, okay. <laughs> dehydrate and you say okay i won't dehydrate and then you're 190 and you still cut to 75 people will still do it you really can't ever stop weight cutting you know guys will and then they have to do day before because if you try to weigh in guys right before like say they try to make us weigh in at 55 and then fight like directly after guys will still cut and then they're they're probably they probably won't be 75 but they'll probably be 65 cutting down to 55 and then they dehydrate and then they get in like what you said before is dehydrate your brain you know, in trauma and everything like that, concussions are way worse when you're dehydrated. So yeah, so the reason people cut, I think some guys in the stream don't get it. it you want to be like a big guy in the fight. You know, if one guy said, why can't you train at your fight weight? Well, you know, if that was your walk around weight, then you'd actually be a 155 pounder fighting against 170 pound men. You need to be that 170 pound guy who just hit 155 for a few minutes and yep. goes back up. Yeah, because, I mean, like, otherwise, I have to fight a guy that's like St. Pierre, who he fights at 170, you know, but he's not walking at 170. He's walking at, you know, probably 195, 200 pounds. Right. So, you know what I mean? So it's like you kind of have to, in the interest of safety, you have to do it 24 hours before so that, you know, people will cut and everyone will struggle to make it. And, you know, I, I would definitely, I would love it if we didn't, have, if no one would cut weight and they could stop it. They just, there's, there's no way you can do that. You can't stop yeah. that. Like a 170-pound man like Joe would be fighting well, against a 170-pound I mean, UFC is like a multi-million dollar company. Couldn't they hire somebody like the day before to just follow you around after you weigh in? <laughs> like, you're, you're getting, getting into, talk, like, semantics. You're talking, I'm, just, I'm just saying. 20 guys on a card. You know, there's 10 fights. You get 20 guys on a card, and they have a card pretty much every week. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure, sure most people take the job for, like, $10 an hour. Yeah, right? That's what they should do. I'm just, you you really can't combat it. It's done in every. It's done in boxing as well. I mean, it's done in all boxing, wrestling. Yeah, it's done. It's well, done speaking of boxing, 
if you guys ever want me to take a fall for a couple million dollars, I'm down to take a punch to the face. <laughs> <laughs> they could tell everyone you're Aki Bono and then just schedule like a friend or something. I'll shave my Wait. head and you can say I'm Butterbean. Yeah, Wait, right? you could make so much money. Like, all you got to do is get your YouTube subscribers in on this. Like, hey, you've always wanted to hit me. So, all right, $100, $100 a punch, nothing below the belt. Let's go. Oh, I was thinking a different way. Like, Wings of Redemption versus Joe Lozon. You know, get a good five grand on the line. Winner gets half. Loser gets half. You're good to <laughs> go. I'll do it. <laughs> He'll do know, it. He said uh, he won't even hurt you. He'll, he knows where you, when your arm's yes. just before the breaking point. Yeah, yeah. Wings yeah, would go. Like, no, like, it's gotta, it's got to be a knockout, though. Wings would go. In that situation, I'd just be like, look, just hit me in the chin. Make it quick. I don't, <laughs> don't beat me up. <laughs> Here. I don't know. I don't know. This subscriber thing. They did punch me in the face. I could take a lot of them because I got a nice squishy body. <laughs> <laughs> give, give them all a body shot. Let them punch you in the body. It's like padding. Yeah. Oh, God. So you know, I'm getting a big head with this. Uh, you know, premium guest on Painkiller already, and we had <laughs> Joe, and we talked about fighting all week. Dude, if we could get Charlie Sheen, I'd talk about sex and drugs all week long, <laughs> all night. That's surely, the, that's surely the catch line to get him. <laughs> uh, let's get Jake the Snake and like, what's up? We, we'll talk about cocaine and how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I would, uh, yeah. So, like, so you want to talk about people who are in their area of expertise, right? You talk to Joe, you talk about fighting. If I get Jesus on here, I'm going to talk about... I don't know, creation of the Bible or something. If I get Charlie Sheen, there is no higher expert on women for money. Hookers and cocaine. There you go, <laughs> hookers and coke. That's, <laughs> I think maybe we found our next, our next target, painkiller so, already. Well, speaking of hookers, Joe, have you ever indulged? Oh, my God. Hookers? No way. I am not paying for that shit. Dude, how easy <laughs> is it to get girls being a UFC fighter? It like, definitely I'm thinking this is better than musician. The problem is I really don't want to go after the girls that are trying to chase a fighter. Yeah, the exactly. ring girls. The I've girl. seen the ring girls. They look worth chasing. The, the ring girl is definitely hot, for sure. Yeah. And they look hot in person, too. Like, when you see them in, like, normal clothes, they look way better than they do when they're all dressed up as a ring car girl. For sure. Hmm. Yep. And do they do they date fighters? Um, I think Ariane dates someone. Um, but, I mean, they could. You know, I don't know what the UFC's policy is on it. Um, yeah, and the best part about it, being a fighter, I mean, you would have no problem like overpowering one of them and just taking her away with you. <laughs> I mean, you should have done that you in your PS Russia voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you put her in chill cold. She wake up. It is happy time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe happy time a little bit before she wake up. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, I always pictured FPS like Russia as like um. Like one of those, what was that game that had Spawn and like Solid Snake on it and all those Zelda characters <laughs> that like guest starred? I, I could picture FPS Rush on a fighting game like that. <laughs> like do the crazy move and like an AK-47 comes out of nowhere. Like yeah, it'd be like an AK-47 juggle. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Alright guys, I think we're wrapping up the podcast now. Wings, right. you want to see us out? Yeah, the, all right, guys. That's Painkiller already, episode forty-one with with your boy Joe Lozon. Um, you got anything you we want to shout out, Joe? Nope. Just glad to be on the show. Thanks He's for glad coming, to be on the man. show. Thanks Peace, for coming. Guys. Later. Anytime.